In previous programmes, I have discussed shutter speeds and apertures for controlling amount of light reaching the camera's sensor. There is a third element, the intensity of light, previously known as film speed, but not to be confused with shutter speeds, incidentally. Intensity of light is measured by a set of numbers we call ISO. That stands for International Organization for Standardization. Rather a complicated uh, figure, if you ask me, but nevertheless, it's a simple set of numbers. As to how the intensity of light is measured, I leave to your imagination. I have seen the equation and it need not bother us here. This is nothing new. We had it in the days of film. Then it was known as ASA, which meant American Standard Association, or something like that anyway. Now in the days, and this is for photographers incidentally with long memories, in the days of film we had what, Ectochrome 64, do you remember that? Kodachrome 25, the, the numbers of course referring to film speeds. There was also Velvia that was rated at 50 and Provia at 100. And there was a tendency for go for the lower film speeds to maintain quality. Now that was fine for outdoor work where there was plenty of light, but if you were shooting interiors then you would have to use a film speed of 200 or 400 to give you a shorter shutter speed, particularly if you were hand holding, you didn't have a tripod or a monopod easy to access to hand. The film ASA figures have successfully transferred to digital, now ISO. But in the past, if you had to purchase a higher speed film, 200 or 400, to photograph, for example, inside a church, then when the job was done, you were stuck with it. But with digital, we can change the ISO for each individual shot and that, believe you me, makes quite a difference. Now here are the basic ISO figures. If you look in your camera menu you will find many more but these are the basic figures and it's easy to see that as we go up or down the scale we halve or double the value. Now when we put these figures with shutter speeds and apertures, and I will now demonstrate this, that by changing the ISO, say from 200 to 400, then I've got to change a shutter speed or an aperture, otherwise I'm going to overexpose the image. But by changing the shutter speed, then I can halve the shutter speed making it easier for me to hand hold. And that's just one simple way where we can use the ISO values to achieve a certain photographic objective. Film photographers often chose the lower value film speeds, for example, like Kodachrome 25 or Velvia, which was rated at 50, to maintain best quality. That is not necessary with a digital camera. I was talking to an agent, a technical agent from Olympus a few years ago, and he informed me that most digital sensors work at their optimum best at 200 ISO. Well, of course, when you're working at 200 ISO, it gives you far more scope than before with a film camera for different types of photographic tasks and 
shoots. Now, when it's necessary to increase or change the ISO, then the sensor still records the light much as before, but then when converting it into an electronic signal, when it passes through the camera's digital processing, then it alters the image in accordance with the settings that you have made before taking the photograph. However, be a little careful here. When camera manufacturers make great claims about ISO handling at higher values for their latest model, avoiding such problems as noise, incidentally, noise just in case, and this is something I will discuss incidentally in a later program, but noise is somewhat similar to getting grain with film images at higher ISO values. But for now, noise can be a problem at higher ISO values. Even if they're not, then whilst the image, this superb image would be fine for camera club work and for other personal uh, projects, when it comes to commercial publishing, if you look at the guidelines, you may find that photographs taken with high ISO values will be rejected, particularly if it wasn't really necessary to do it in the first place. So what do I do? Well, I shoot everything where possible at 200 ISO, only making a change, particularly increasing it when I have no choice. Incidentally, before I go, if you are using a camera on auto, then it's quite likely, without your knowledge, it will increase the ISO under certain conditions. Also, even if you're using the camera on program, aperture or shutter priority, if the ISO value in the menu is on auto, exactly the same thing can happen. So before you do the shoot, make sure that the ISO value is the one of your choice and not on auto.